start that. Welcome to uh, week two of um, our focus class. And uh, this is going to go quick. There's only four weeks. So if you've been in other classes, you know, six weeks has been uh, the standard time that I've done. So four weeks is will be fairly quick. And I know some of you might, this might be your first class. I had a, a number of people register after the first class. So that's fine. I can send you um, that link. So what I need to know is if you registered after the first class and you need to get the link and the slides from the first class so you can catch up, if you would please put that in the chat, that would be helpful. If you already registered and you're, you were here for the first class, you don't have to do that. Because if you recall, what I'll do is after each class, I send out the slides and I send out a link to the recording. I know a number of people said they can't make it at the live time, so that they'll watch it later, and that's fine. And that recording is on YouTube. Um, so, you know, depending on what device you're from, if you're on a work device, sometimes you can't um, access that. You might have to do it on a personal device. So. Now, the other thing, the other housekeeping thing to focus on <laughs> is that if you want Know Your Numbers credit, um, if you're an employee and you want Know Your Numbers credit, you need to put that in the chat. So just put uh, K-Y-N and make sure your name is visible. And I can save the chat, so I'll take attendance later to capture that for the Know Your Numbers credit. I think it's a $100 credit for each EFR course that you take. And some of you might've taken the other class that I did earlier in the year, and that's fine. I'm pretty sure you can get credit for more than one. All right, so um, here we are week two. And um, last week I thought we had a, a good class. Um, although I have to confess, I'm a bit scattered and unfocused myself. Um, I'm trying to put this all together and it's one of the busier times for me with all the other stuff going on. So I get it. I can totally relate. My mind is unfocused and scattered at times as well. So these practices are good for me too. Um, yeah. So moving on to the second slide, I'm going to just we're going to start with where is your attention now? The covering oh. provider, if they admit. I'm going to put everybody on mute. Let me see if I yeah. can do that. Mute all. Yeah. So I want to ask you where is your attention right now? What are you thinking about? What other mental activity is there? What emotional state? What moods? What feelings? What's where, where is your attention right now? Maybe it's on your to do list, maybe it's on any number of things. Just kind of checking in with yourself, being aware of where your attention is. And if you recall, that was one of the practices I asked you to do last week is just to periodically stop yourself, maybe remind yourself with a little reminder on your phone or something like that, and just kind of ask yourself, where is my attention right now? So kind of doing these little focus checks. And now that we've done that, I want to lead you through um, a similar practice that we did last week, the flashlight practice, but we're going to take it an extra step. So take a moment to get yourself comfortable. This will take maybe five or six minutes or so. And we're going to find the flashlight again. So sitting in an upright but stable and alert posture. Being comfortable but not overly relaxed. So, you know, sitting upright. So actually upright but not uptight. And sitting straight with the shoulders back, chest open. Uh, letting your hands rest comfortably and closing your eyes, or if you'd prefer, just lowering your eyelids to have a soft gaze down in front of you. 
and just begin by following your breath. Following the breath at its natural pace, not controlling it, just being aware of the breath flowing in and out of your body and actually tuning into breath related sensations. So this may be the coolness of the air going in through your nostrils, the sensations of your lungs filling up your chest and the expansion there, or maybe at the belly, feeling the belly moving in and out. Choose one area of the body that you, where you feel the breath most directly. Choose that area to focus on. And just like a flashlight with a strong bright beam, keep your focus on that area. And whenever your flashlight drifts to something else, this time I want you to pause for a moment and observe where the flashlight is now directed. Give it a label. Identify what type of distraction has appeared on your whiteboard. Is it a thought, an emotion, or a sensation? A thought could be a worry, a reminder, a memory, an idea, an item on your to-do list. An emotion could be a feeling of frustration or restlessness or anything, any feelings that you might notice that might come up. Whatever has captured your attentional flashlight, whatever that is, just label it. Again, it also could be like a, a sensation in the body, an itch or a sore muscle or you know, an ache or a pain. Could be some, a sound something external, something you heard or smelled or something that caught your attention in the background. And see, make this a quick process, right? So you don't necessarily need to go down a rabbit hole of elaborating on the distraction or asking yourself why you're thinking about this particular thing that's distracted you. It's not your job now to answer these questions or reprimand yourself even. Now is actually the time to notice what's on your whiteboard, but not to engage with it. Just label the contents as best you can from these three categories, thought, emotion, or sensation. And then, move on. You can come back to the present moment, back to your breath, after every instance of labeling. If it's a strong experience, it might pop up repeatedly. That's the case, just label it again and repeat. So every time you notice your mind wandering, tag the content of your mind wandering and then come back to your breath. So I'm gonna leave you with a moment or so of silence. So take your flashlight, focus it on the breath and with some silence, just notice where it goes and if it gets pointed somewhere else, just label that. And then keep coming back, keep redirecting your flashlight back to that spot of the breath. 
that you picked before at your home base. All right, now let's come back to our breath again. Come back to the home base or the anchor of your breath. Let's feel the breath again for a few more cycles, just feeling the inflow and outflow. And we're gonna finish the exercise in just a moment. So maybe taking a deep breath if you like. Breathe grounding yourself with your body, perhaps noticing your body in the chair, your feet on the floor. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes as we finish that. So thank you for joining me with that practice. So that is an expansion of what we did the first week. We um, shined our flashlight, but then we really noticed what pulled our attention. And we notice where our flashlight got diverted to and we labeled it. And if you want, put in the chat feature what that was like, maybe what pulled your distraction, what the label was or what that was like, just kind of coming back. You get distracted, you get your attention gets pulled or even hijacked by something. And then you come back, you come back to the breath. Now, you could also use the uh, another part to anchor yourself, some people would prefer to use perhaps um, the feeling of the body in the chair, your feet on the floor, something like that. You could use that as your anchor to point your flashlight at. Um, that's another alternative, just so you know. But the idea here is we're noticing now, we're using a little bit more of an expanded awareness, a little bit more of that floodlight, which I'm gonna talk about in a couple of minutes. But that's the, the next kind of skill of this, having the flashlight, the, the focused beam, but then also having this awareness of the bigger picture. And we do that in meditation by noticing what it was that distract us, distracted us. And if you've been in my classes before, you know that you know, that's just a natural thing that happens. Our, our mind makes thoughts all day long. And um, especially if you have a busy mind or an active mind, or you got a lot on your mind, and who doesn't these days, you know, there's a lot of stuff internally that, that really pulls our attention. But let me go to this. So I um, just kind of want to do a check-in. And um, today, as you can probably tell a little bit, we're going to focus on the tension in the body. And we're actually going to do a body scan. And um, so one thing that you might do as a mindful minute, um, you know, we did a more, a longer pause there, but as a mindful minute or a mindful pause for yourself, just pause and turn inward and notice how your body feels. Just notice whatever you notice in your body. Maybe, maybe there's a sense of of comfort and ease in your body, or maybe there's some soreness, or maybe there's an itch or whatever it is, maybe you notice your body feels hungry or thirsty or needs to stretch. So you're just kind of checking in, what does the body need? What do you notice? All right, great. So I've got a few people, thank you for putting in the chat here, that some of the uh, distractions that were pulling your attention. Um, yeah, that's a good one. My hands are cold, so I refocused on my breath. You know, you notice that the temperature of, of your hands or your feet, you know, we're actually, we're gonna do a body scan later. And in that, we'll focus on those kinds of things, body sensations. Uh, anxiety came up about all the things you have to do. And so let me say to all of you, you know, you're probably feeling that, you know, you've got a thousand things on your to-do list and you're saying, what the heck am I doing here in this class? Well, I think you're, you're doing yourself a big favor by taking this time out to take this class. It's only 45 minutes, right? 
because I think what you're going to learn, hopefully, is that by training your attention and increasing your focus, um, you're going to be better in a few weeks. I mean, it's going to take some practice and it does help to do the practice in between classes, but you're going to be better at, at refocusing that flashlight, even with things like anxiety or all in the growing to-do lists. Uh, so somebody says they're calming when gently focused on the breath. Good. It's good to notice that too. Distracted from all the sensations. Yeah. So that's the idea. Notice the distractions. Um, yeah. So as I was labeling my distraction, made me think of another distraction. And so I had to let everything go and just focus on my breath. Good point. One distraction can lead to another, to another, to another, to a whole train load of associations and distractions. And that's kind of that, that's where we get totally lost in thought. So the practice of continuing to come back to the anchor, it's always good to have the anchor in your breath or your body coming back to that, even as you're going about your day, you know, uh, is very, very helpful. So here's a good one. Very helpful to label the thought, emotion, or sensation. I noticed the tension on the side of my neck and stretched and breathed deeply to release the tension. Yeah, so often we don't notice those things. They just, they're good. they fly under the radar. And so also kind of putting our attention on those can help us realize what we need, what our body needs. Noises were the main distraction today. Yeah, so there's lots of external things that are going on, right? Lots of things that pull our attention. Um, Good, so I noticed some, a bunch of you have put in the Know Your Numbers again, that's good. So I can take attendance for that later. I like the write the distraction on the whiteboard of your mind direction. I'm a very visual person with an active imagination. Yeah, and, that, and that's what we talked about. You know, the, the, the whiteboard is the place where we place all those things. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit as to what that has to do with um, improving our attention which means how that improves our uh, memory. Um, this is not a course in memory, but it will hopefully help with that a little bit. All right, so thank you for all those comments. So I uh, want to now ask you, um, how did it go last week? Take a, take a minute if you want to put it in the chat. What was that like for you to try? I asked you to try to do at least three minutes of the flashlight exercise. Um, every day or most days. So what was that like? Were you able to find time to do that? Um, what was the challenge? I'm sure there were some barriers um, or if you were able to, you know, what did you, what did you notice by doing some of those practices? So while I'm talking, put that in the chat, just give me some feedback of what your first week was like. Now, the mini lesson means um, just simply what we're going to do today is kind of bringing the mind and the body together, connecting the dots between thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. And you'll see that we're going to do the practice a little bit later on the um, body scan. So here's a couple of good. So thank you for these comments. Difficult, hard to say, stay focused. One distraction led to another and remember to go back. Well, yeah, so, um, and I would say to that, be careful not to give yourself a hard time. That's just the nature of the beast in a sense. Um, one distraction does lead to another, but at least you're trying. The point is, is that I'm asking you to do that. The more we put our awareness there, the more we realize, yeah, my flashlight gets pulled in all sorts of different directions. Um, I did almost every day for a few minutes. Good. That's all it takes. A few minutes, especially at this point. Although I do think it's helpful to kind of increase a few minutes to maybe build up to that that 12 minute mark. Remember, we talked about 12 minutes is an optimal time. So building up to that um, uh, as we go through the course. I found it helpful to fall asleep when I wake during the night. Yeah, good. Excellent. Good. That's, that's a great way to apply it. Hard to make myself sit and do it without your direction. So had to redo and start over a few times. So remember, I, I sent you the, um, the audio file and hopefully you could open that. 
but um, you, did I send that? See, no, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I sent that. But you can also go to our meditation page on our website, or you can go to an app. So pick something, if it's not exactly the flashlight exercise, even just the basic meditation you can use. And every time you're focusing on your anchor, you're using the flashlight. And whenever you get distracted, you're being aware of that, you're noticing where the flashlight went. So just try that. If you need some direction, that's that's very common. It's helpful to have guidance. Set my watch to remind me to breathe. Good. I need the guidance. I was able to do this daily. Yeah. So give yourself a reminder that we all need reminders because otherwise we just forget. We get carried away by the day and all the different distractions. So much going on. It's easy to get sidetracked. Yep. Definitely need more practice. And that's the that's really the message. We need more practice. That's why I'm asking you to do it throughout the week. Um, yeah, here's a good one. Help generate curiosity in what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's that's important. Be curious about where you go. Every day, 20 to 25 minutes. Wow, gold star. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, if, you, if you have that kind of a practice going, very, very good. So keep focusing the flashlight during your practice. So there's a bunch more. I'm not going to go through them all. But thank you for those. You can all scroll scroll through, through these. And the idea is that we see that we all have common, you know, difficulties in building a practice and in finding a way, the time and the place to do the practice. But believe me, the more you can create a routine or a habit to do this, and, and it, when you establish that habit, um, you know, after a few weeks, uh, that will begin to really see the benefits. So good. So I think you're on the road. I would say that's a good, you're all having a good first step. All right. So next question, what did you notice about distractions? Some of you said those in the chat there. I probably should have gone to this slide before. We tend to think of distractions as external, um, you know, the buzz of a phone, the, the, an email, whatever those, the sounds that we hear. Um, but most of our distractions are internal. You know, that's where we realize that there's all sorts of internal uh, noise, chatter um, going on. And so that's, uh, that's what, that's kind of common for all of us. Um, so she says in the book, in the previous chapter, we talked about finding our focus in a world of distractions, which means noticing when your flashlight has strayed and how to quickly and smoothly move it back where you want it. This is the essential first step in training your attention. So you have to notice where it goes off to. You have to notice the various things that pull your attention, uh, the various triggers. Uh, that are in our external and internal environment. And um, the, this is the floodlight. Now, this is what I was talking about before, that the floodlight is this broader, more open um, awareness, okay? So it's being aware, um, not, because if we were laser focused with a flashlight all the time, we wouldn't be aware of anything going on around us. So the floodlight, helps us be more open to um, you know what's what's happening and, and there's the example of you know you see a flashing yellow light as you're driving and you have to go on alert you have to be aware of gee somebody could cross that intersection or you know you have to be cautious you have to be open and aware and so they kind of go hand in hand and, and in meditation we are aware of when we get distracted. That's the floodlight. That's the opening up of the awareness. And we realize that we're getting distracted by all sorts of different things. And then we redirect it with the flashlight. Um, let me just check my notes here. Yeah, so the this more open awareness, and we'll try this in the next, week or two um and if, if you've been in some of my classes before just the mindfulness classes there are more 
open practices where you start by focusing with your flashlight on that anchor of the breath or part of your body. But then you begin to just have an open, receptive awareness and kind of letting in through your senses whatever is going on. And when something comes up, kind of like we did in the exercise, you can even spend more time. So if it's a thought or an emotion or a body sensation, you can be curious about that. And you can really begin to explore that and then notice it sort of have a, has a life of its own and it begins to fade and dissolve. And then you can come back to your anchor at any time. And then you open up your awareness again and just notice what comes into your field of awareness, like clouds sort of coming across the open sky of your awareness. Your awareness itself is the open sky. The clouds that drift by are the emotions, the thoughts, the body sensations. And we can learn to just step back from them and just observe them and notice that we don't have to get carried away by them. That's sort of the one of the uh, major skills of not getting carried away by things that really are strong and pull our attention. All right. So the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is this idea of the whiteboard and remembering better. And some of you may have gotten the book. I know a couple of you said that, um, and it's really a good kind of companion to this class. So again, it's called Peak Mind. That's what this is all based on by Amishi Jha, that's spelled J-H-A, if you want to look it up on Amazon or something like that. And, um, you know, it's really got a lot more than I can convey in these, in these classes. Um, so if you want to really learn more and read more about memory, for example, she's got a lot of how attention affects our memory capacity. And remember, we talked about our attention gets eroded by stress, uh, by poor mood, and um, a third one, I can't remember. <laughs> so there's a third one. Um, oh, threat. So stress, poor mood, and threat. Those are things that erode our attention and pull us away and make it really hard to be focused. So in a way, you know, it's not your fault. There's a lot of that going on these days and we're kind of, you know, swimming against the tide. So it makes it harder. That's why the practice is important. But part of the, the piece that she calls Remember Better in the book is really fascinating because she talks about this idea that mindfulness actually helps our memory. And the way that it helps our memory is because, again, the whiteboard, where we place things for a brief period of time. And she says the whiteboard is helpful in our attention. It helps us to remember things for a brief period of time. But the problem with the whiteboard is it has disappearing ink. And because we have so many distractions and because there's so much on our minds, that whiteboard can become cluttered and it it's constantly changing. There's information going in, it's being placed on the whiteboard, and then it's, it's erasing. And, and the only way to kind of keep that memory solid is the focus, is to really keep focusing on that one thing. It's like it's repetition, like we, how we learned things when we were young. Uh, so it's, it's more complicated than that, of course, and that's where reading the book would be helpful. But um, so the problem with the whiteboard is when it becomes cluttered by things that we're focusing on from the past, you know, rewinding things that have happened and replaying them in our minds, or things we're worried about in the future, things we're projecting about, things that are not here. In other words, not focusing on the present moment. So in our mindfulness practices, we come back to the present moment time and time again. It's like that refocusing with the flashlight. The more we do that, the more we keep the whiteboard clear and the more we're able to um, use that information more thoughtfully and more mindfully, more wisely. And the more then we're able to get it into um, the part of memory that where it becomes consolidated. Um, and that's where the science gets beyond me. But 
but um, that really does help. So you might have been wondering, why are we doing mindfulness practices to help our attention? And that's one of the reasons why, because the research, and she cites a, a number of studies uh, that are really interesting. Um, and the research really shows that, yeah, mindfulness practices and the refocusing of our flashlight really does help our, our memory. So um, let's see. Oh, and there's another quote here. So, and this is where the, the lesson today is kind of important. You need to make sure both your mind and your body show up for the stuff you want to remember. So um, that second bullet there, our memories are strongly tied to our senses. So if you bring up a memory, an older memory, perhaps a childhood memory of something pleasant, you know, maybe you went to a, a park or you went to a amusement park or something and you went with family and I don't know, something that was really, um, had a lot going on. There were maybe tastes and sounds and smells. Those are the things that give the memory power in a sense. And when you go back to remember them, those are the things that, that you remember. You remember the, the sensory input of those. So that's why the practice that we're gonna be doing today has to do with a body scan. Because you might be thinking, well, what's my body got to do with my mind? Uh, well, the body scan and noticing how we take in um, information through the body is one way that we can improve our memory. Another way to think of that as well is that we know, and if you've ever done any reading on traumatic memories, a great book, by the way, is The Body Keeps Score um, by uh, Bessel van der Kolk. Um, and he talks about how when people go through you know, real trauma, really difficult trauma, talk therapy by itself usually doesn't work because it's not just talking about the event that helps these traumatic memories get stored in the body. And that's why you have to do kind of body oriented kinds of uh, things to help release them. And um, so all memories, you know, have to do with our bodies as well. And so that's why we're gonna do um, the, the body scan in a couple of minutes. But before we do that, just I've used this, I use this cartoon a lot and um, but I think this illustrates, you know, that this guy on the walk here, his whiteboard is filled with all the stresses and worries and concerns that he has, and it's cluttered. Whereas the dog, you know, dogs have, it's a dog's life, right? <laughs> the dogs don't have those kinds of concerns. The dog has, is mindful, you know, the mind is not full, but the dog is mindful and has a clear mind is probably in the present moment. Um, most of the time, uh, doesn't really go back to the past, doesn't project to the future too much, um, but really has, you know, does, has a clear whiteboard. So, you know, that's just kind of an illustration of that whole concept. Now, the other thing is, um, nine attitudes of mindfulness. Now, this is something I'm not going to show it today, but when I send the slides out, you might wanna watch some of this if you haven't watched it before, because with our practices, you might've noticed yourself having opinions or attitudes about how you're doing the practices. And sometimes those attitudes or opinions we have are negative. You know, why am I doing this? This doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I'm just getting bored or my mind is, I have too many thoughts, I can't do this. Those are all judgments. Those are all, you know, self-criticisms in a way, opinions. So the point being is that we let those go. We try to bring an attitude of openness, of curiosity, of discovery, of just trying to go into these practices without expecting anything in particular to happen specific, you know, it's not like we're trying to achieve a special state, okay, but that we just try to accept things as they are. That's another good attitude, just acceptance of things as they are, as they unfold. 
as we do these practices. And then the other one I'll, I'll just highlight is beginner's mind. And beginner's mind is simply trying to view these things that we do with a beginner's mind, with a fresh mind, with as if we've never tried these before. Um, as if, you know, if you have a, a raisin, for example, there's a classic exercise and you take one raisin and you eat that raisin very slowly and you eat that raisin as if you've never tasted a raisin before. You've never looked at one. You don't even know what it is. Um, that's beginner's mind, you know, really trying to look at all this with a fresh, open awareness without any preconceived notions. Okay, so those are some attitudes that really help with these practices. All right, so we're going to go into the, uh, the practice. And before I do, let me just pause and see if you have any questions. I've kind of been doing a lot of talking here. Any questions? before we do this next practice about anything I've said or anything that you want me to clarify. Somebody says they have to hop off early and that's fine if you do, I certainly understand. Um, as I said, I'm gonna send the slides out so you have them as well as the link to the recording. So you'll be able to watch it later. But any questions at this point? All right, well, let me know. And after we do the practice, if you have um, a question or a comment about what that was like, I'll, I'll welcome that as well. So in this practice, we're going to do a body scan. And um, a body scan is a traditional meditation mindfulness practice. Uh, but here we're gonna use it with the intention of kind of keeping the flashlight, but sort of more thinking of it like a searchlight in a sense, we're gonna be searching through different parts of the body and we're gonna just be observing. We're gonna just be noticing what we come across. And you might notice certain things as we do this that you might have those opinions or judgments about. You know, sometimes we are not happy with a certain pain in our body or a couple extra pounds we put on or whatever it is, you know, we all have those things. So if those arise, just notice them, okay? Just try to step back from them, notice them and let it go, and then come back to where we're at in the body scan. Come back to where we're pointing the flashlight. So it's the same kind of thing. You might notice distractions. You might notice things that pull your attention away from the exercise, away from the flashlight, and that's fine. That's going to happen. Just keep redirecting it back to where we're at. And the difference is instead of keeping our flashlight on one place, you know, the breath, we're going to keep, we're going to move our flashlight around and we're going to notice different things within the body. Okay, so let's begin. So just take a moment, as we often do, just settling in taking a moment to adjust your posture, be in a position that's again, comfortable and balanced and stable so that you can be um, aware. I don't want you to be like falling asleep here, okay? I want you to be aware and awake and listening as best you can. Now, if you do fall asleep, that's okay. <laughs> but also, so, you know, if you're really sleepy, cause sometimes we are after lunch, if you've had lunch, you might keep your eyes slightly open with a downward gaze. That's one way to not fall asleep. You might keep your posture upright a little bit more, stretch out your spine a little bit. It's another way to kind of keep awake. So we're trying to find a balance between being attentive and relaxed. So take a moment to find that position for yourself and Again, you can close your eyes or if you think it would help keep them slightly open. And let's take a moment to just feel our breath again before we do the body scan itself, but just feel the breath moving in and out of the body. And if you wanna take a couple of deep breaths, go ahead and do that at your own pace. And 
that can help us feel the breath. It can help us relax, especially on the out breath. And just let the breath be there, let the breath come and go, you know, the inflow and outflow of each breath. But now we're gonna move our flashlight around, okay? So let's start with our toes. Direct your attention and your flashlight to one of your toes. Take note of whatever sensations you notice there. Might be cold or warm or tingling or tightness in the shoe, or they might not notice anything at all. So whatever it is, just notice this, whatever is you're aware of in this one toe. And then the other toes and just spread that out. Notice what awareness in your foot, the feeling of your foot on the ground, the feeling of your foot with ever, whatever shoes or socks you might have on. Just notice with curiosity and kind of exploring with a flashlight and then moving to the other foot You've just been focusing on one. So just do the same thing with both of your feet, just shining your flashlight around, noticing any sensations that are that are that are there that you're that you're aware of. Or you might there may be no sensations. That's okay too. You know, if there's very few sensations as we do this, even just being aware of that is fine. And then moving the flashlight up our, our legs. And so we're gonna just move them slowly up through our calves and then up to the knees and then the thighs. And just being aware perhaps of shining the flashlight up and down the legs. So you're kind of aware of the length and the volume of your legs. And anything that you notice there, there might be a sensation in any part of the legs. And then moving that up into the lower part of the torso, the pelvic area, the buttocks, the, the whole lower torso, just sort of exploring with your flashlight this whole area. And again, moving now up into the middle part of your torso, the belly, inside and out, the lower back. And remember, anytime if you do get distracted, if that flashlight gets pulled away, just simply notice that. You can label it like we did before and then redirect its light back onto this area where in the stomach area. And then we're moving now up into the upper torso, the chest, the upper back, the space in between. You might notice the movements of your breath as you feel them as the lungs expand and contract and the ribs and the heart beating. And then up into the shoulders, noticing the shoulders from the inside out. And then letting their flashlight down through our arms and down to both hands in the same way, just exploring. Hands often have sensations that we can feel. So maybe noticing tingling or temperature or the touch of your hands where they're resting. And then expanding upwards into the 
neck, lower jaw, up into the face, around the mouth and the eyes and the brow and the sides of the head, the whole head, just taking it all in, just being aware of whatever you notice, whatever is present in your awareness right now. And then the, the last step we'll do is just expanding this awareness to feel the whole body as we, from head to toe, just being aware of the whole body with a really kind of open awareness. That's sort of more like a floodlight. And just sort of rest in this floodlight awareness of the whole body sitting here. And we're going to finish. And so just when you're ready, just opening the eyes and finishing that body scan exercise and just taking a moment to reconnect with your surroundings as we finish the exercise for today. And I thank you. And I notice we're actually a couple minutes over. I apologize for that. I lost track of time myself there a little bit. So I'm um, just going to show you a couple of other quick slides, which you can use in your practice. There's mindful movement, mindful walking, creative ways of moving. These are all ways that we can use our body. Yoga, mindful movements with Thich Nhat Hanh. And here's the practice. What I want you to do is the body scan practice. Again, you can start with a small practice, three minutes minimum. If you have time to expand it to closer to 12, that's great. Um, the flashlight practice, you can still integrate in every other day, or you can do them both in a day if you have time, but keep doing the flashlight practice as well. And also keep noticing where your attention is. And if, you know, if you can pay attention to those routine tasks, still just noticing what it's like to wash your hands, brush your teeth, all those kinds of things, keeping your flashlight of attention there. Uh, this last slide here does have a, a link to the body scan. This is on our meditation page on our EFR website. There's also other ones there that you see that you can click into. So those are your practices. And uh, with that, I'll say thanks very much for joining. And I'm sorry I went over a little bit, but um, this will be recorded. And um, any, any last questions before we finish for the day? Okay, great. Let's see, thank you all. And looking forward to seeing you next week. And I um, hope you have a good week of practice. Do the best you can, trying to just find those times, even if they're brief. Uh, as, remember, as I said, it's better to have frequent times, if, even if they're brief, throughout the week, rather than long times once or twice a week. Okay. So thank you all, and have a great week. And I'll stop the recording.